Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to show you how to cut and create an intricate piece of art like this. Nature has inspired art for centuries. Today we're going to learn how to make one of nature's most fascinating creatures, the hummingbird. It is so cool, I love this. Now we have designed a lovely layered hummingbird made entirely of cardstock. Each layer is made up of a lot of intricate details, which you can see, and they can be tricky to cut. But fear not, my crafty friends, because I have some great tips and tricks for getting the perfect cut every time, even on these really intricate designs. And I'm going to share all of it with you. So let's go over to my craft table so we can get started. So let's start with the materials that we need for intricately cut projects like our lovely hummingbird. First, good quality cardstock is the most important part of any paper craft. I'm going to use two different kinds. I'll use this really pretty mirror metallic cardstock in silver for the bottom layer. I think this will work great as the base piece because it's more sturdy than regular cardstock. Then we'll use this 65 pound cardstock for the four top layers, as you can see here. Links to these exact cardstock packs are below this video, so there's no need to guess at what I'm using. Now to keep our intricately cut layers together, we need a double-sided adhesive. We can use something like these adhesive foam squares, but when we start making these intricate designs with delicate lines, sometimes these can be noticeable. So something else you can use are zots, which are clear. Either one will give your design lift and dimension. And I'll be using my Cricut Maker 3 to cut my hummingbird, but you can also use a regular Maker or any of the Explorer series. You can even use the Joy. We'll also need a machine mat. You can use a blue light grip mat or a green standard grip mat. Just be sure it's clean and sticky. This is really, really important for getting the best intricate cuts. You'll also want a scraper tool, a weeding tool, scissors come in handy as well, and I recommend a piece of aluminum foil. And I'll show you how this will help you get those intricate cuts later in this video. Now, once I teach you how to make your cuts successfully and put it all together, I'm also gonna show you some really fun ways to show off your layer design like this too. So make sure you watch all the way to the end for my ideas. You ready? Let me show you where to find today's free design file and then I'll show you how to cut the intricate details and put it all together. Step one, get my free hummingbird design file. First, go to jennifermaker.com slash 234 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the design by searching the page for design number 234 and then click it to download a zip file with an SVG file for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, a DXF file, and a printable PDF for cutting by hand. Let me show you how to cut this intricate design on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file to Cricut Design Space. Go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS if you're unsure how to unzip and upload SVG cut files. Here's what my layered hummingbird design looks like in Cricut Design Space. You can zoom out to see the full design by clicking on the minus sign in the lower left corner of the canvas. This design contains five layers. Click ungroup to see them all. I'm using the colors that you can see here, but you can change the colors by selecting each layer and clicking on the color picker at the top of the screen. Feel free to experiment to see what color combination you like best. You can also resize this design if you'd like. To do this, click on select all in the top menu, then click Align and scroll down and select Center. The design will return to its original position in a stack. Now click Group at the top of the Layers panel on the far right. This way, when you resize, all of the layers maintain the same proportions. To resize, simply drag the resize handle in the lower right corner of the bounding box until you get the size you want. 
If you need help resizing an SVG in Cricut Design Space, you can check out my resizing guide at jennifermaker.com slash resize SVG. I explain exactly what you need to do to resize any design to fit your needs. Step two, cut out your intricate layers. Once you have the layered hummingbird adjusted to your preferred measurements, you are ready to click make it. If prompted, select on mat on the next screen and continue. And then click continue again. We will select our base material on the next screen. Normally, I would select medium cardstock and heavy cardstock since that's what I'm using for my design. However, since this design is very detailed and requires a lot of intricate and precise cuts, I'm going to use a different setting this time. I'm going to choose cardstock for intricate cuts. Click browse all materials and type intricate into the search window. And then click on it to select it and click done. And I always add more pressure to get a good clean cut. I will also check the box next to remember material settings so the machine will use the same setting for each mat. I did a lot of experimenting and found that complex designs work best with this setting. And I have more tips to help you get the best cut. Tip number one, use a clean mat for the best cuts on a Cricut. Make sure you use a clean sticky mat. It doesn't have to be brand new, but the cleaner, the better. You can use a blue light grip mat or a green standard grip mat. It's totally up to you. Tip number two, use a clean blade for the best cuts on a Cricut. Make sure you have a clean blade. If you're not sure if your blade is clean or not, here's what you can do. Get a piece of aluminum foil about 12 by 12 inches and wad it up into a tight ball. Then push the blade's plunger down to expose the blade itself and keep it out. And then carefully poke the blade into the aluminum foil ball about 40 to 50 times. Poking that pointy blade into the ball will remove debris or oxidation that can build up on the blade. While this is not sharpening the blade, which is commonly believed, it is using friction to remove little bits that collect on your blade and can cause issues when cutting. Tip number three, use quality materials for the best cut on a Cricut. Always make sure to use quality materials. Your materials can make a huge difference in how well it cuts. Not all paper is created equal. If the fibers are weaker or shorter in the paper, which you usually find in lower quality cardstock, you'll get more tearing. So if your paper doesn't seem to be cutting well, even after using a clean sticky mat and a clean blade, the paper itself could be the culprit. There have been many times when I've had an issue and then changed to a new cardstock only to have everything work perfectly. Cricut paper is high quality, so is Recollections. Stay away from Park Lane brand, sorry. So before you give up on that project, try a new paper. For even more help with cutting cardstock, check out my Cricut Tips and Tricks for Cleaner Cuts, a handy guide to ensure you get the cleanest and best cuts at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut dash blades. Once you're ready to cut, put your first piece of cardstock on the machine mat. You can use a brayer tool to make sure it's fully adhered. Then load the machine mat into your machine and press the flashing button to start the cut. As mentioned before, I'm using mirror cardstock for my bottom layer, and that's the layer my machine shows to cut first. When the cut was done, I checked it to see how it did before I unloaded the machine mat, and I noticed that it didn't look like it cut all the way through. So here's a tip for whenever your cut does not go all the way through on your Cricut. First, check it before you press the unload button. And if it didn't cut all the way through, press the flashing button in the middle again. The machine will make another cut exactly like the first, and hopefully this time it will cut all the way through. And sure enough, it looks like this did the trick. Just remember to check the cut before unloading your machine mat.
You can do this whenever you run into a cutting issue. This is especially handy when cutting wood. You always want to check your cut, especially with thicker materials, before you unload your mat. When each layer is finished cutting, unload your machine mat and flip it over and pull your mat away from your cardstock to remove it. This helps prevent any ripping or curling of the paper. As you cut each layer, you may notice small bits and pieces of cardstock left behind on the machine mat. I use my extra large Cricut scraper tool to easily remove those pieces. And you can use your fingers or a weeding tool to pop out any of the little bits that didn't cut out of the cardstock. These are the five layers you'll have when you're all done cutting. Step three, assemble the layered hummingbird. Now that you have your five pieces cut out, it's time to put it all together. We'll use our zots for this. I really like these zots because they will give the layer some dimension and you can't see them because they're clear. You can of course also use strips of double-sided foam adhesive tape or squares. It's totally fine, but I like that the zots are invisible and don't show through. And that's a particularly big deal on these intricate pieces. Now I started by pulling the zots off the backing and applying them to the cardstock, but they are really sticky, so I found that keeping them on the backing and pressing them into the cardstock instead worked so much better. This is how I applied the zots to the back of layer 4 of the hummingbird. I always recommend you put whatever adhesive onto the back of your layer. Now center and place layer four on top of layer five. And here's a tip for layering cardstock. As you place the layers on one another, lay them down lightly so you can adjust your placement if needed, and then press to the underlying layer when they are in position. It can be tough to line everything up just right, so doing it this way is a big help. And it's important to line the layers up to get the right effect for your 3D design. Now continue adding the clear adhesive dots to the remaining layers. And stack them accordingly. Place layer one on top of layer two to complete the design. Step four, show it off. Here's what my finished 3D hummingbird looks like. And I just love the look of all the layers and how the pretty colors complement one another. Again, you can use whatever colors you'd like to go along with your personal decor, or maybe make one to give as a gift. These would be really pretty for Mother's Day or around the house as spring decor. So I have more ideas for showing off your hummingbird. You could give your hummingbird a home by adding it to a shadow box like this. Just use tape or hot glue to mount it to the shadow box backing. We have added some really pretty paper flowers too. I love this idea. I also made a smaller version that you can cut on the Joy. You can also make a card out of it. I've included the special cut settings for the Joy in the description underneath this video. And how about these pretty hummingbird magnets? These could be added to your refrigerator or maybe a wall calendar or an organizer. They're so fun. I love this. So many fun ideas. Put them into a flower arrangement, make a window cling, so many things you can do. Are you going to make this hummingbird? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you have any questions about making the design, layering cardstock, creating shadow boxes, or just doing intricate cuts that I didn't answer here. Just leave your question below this video or ask over in our awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I love to see your projects. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.